project, and tonight we have an interview with um, your your Amy Tulo. I forgot the I uh, forgot the delay. Yeah, and uh, we uh, are doing an interview with um, uh, Matthew uh, Morales, uh, and we are setting up right now. Uh, we have a couple of uh, a, a band. Uh, Pericini, uh, a trio, which is a jazz band. Uh, we're, we're kind of like uh, doing this on the fly right now because I gave them the wrong direction, so it's not that they're a party band, it's my fault. Uh, so anyway, the, uh, the, the uh, booking agent and the rest of the band is on their way here. They're setting up. We should be ready to start within the next few minutes. Uh, in the uh, in the meantime, what we'll talk about is some of the things that we've been doing here at our show uh, in the last recent weeks. We've been talking about uh, writing, writing novels, uh, writing. Uh, we're we're going to have some uh, talk to the band about some of their uh, uh, motivations of writing their music uh, and uh, some of the history of the band. Uh, We've been um, doing this show now for two months now, and uh, you never know what's going to go on. But this is a pretty good band. I uh, listen to their tapes, uh, which we'll play one of their tapes, and we're going to be doing a live set here uh, as soon as we do some interviews. Uh, we have what? The mic says that it's catching it. It's not catching it. Okay. Face that mic on the, the sink towards me. The, uh, okay. Cast it. You got it? Okay. You got it? Just it up. A little bit better. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, here we go again. So, we have an interview with the band tonight uh, called the, the, the Pernuccici. Um, Trio, and it's a jazz band, and they're a local band, and uh, we also have an interview with Matthew Morales, who is their booking agent, and uh, we had intended to be set up here, but unfortunately I gave them the wrong directions on how to get here, so it's kind of a mystery place anyway, it's uh, no, no uh, postings. Um, so anyway, the, um, the, the shows and stuff that we've been doing in the past have been for you know, uh, writer's uh, shop, uh, teaching people a little bit about the techniques of writing. And uh, tonight we're going to have a live band. Um, we're going to promote uh, some of the local talent in the area, which is what the show has initially started all over. And... Um, now it's just a matter of getting things started. We have two of the band members here. We have uh, the uh, bass player, and you you can come along over here, no, son. Right here. <laughs> Talk to him. Well, yeah. Well, we we okay. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself what? and uh, what's your volume. Yeah. When? How long you've been playing bass? Flipping mics. And, After graduating as a student, um, so I, I worked with him in the drumline program. And when uh, he graduated, he went into jazz guitar performance. I let him go to college, and he asked me to um, play bass for a couple of gigs, and it just kind of progressed from there. And we've been playing together for a couple of years. Um, we have our drummer Chris with us today. Okay, we can use a couple different drummers. But, uh, Okay, uh, just go ahead and talk to the camera. Tell them about your music thing, you right? Alright. I need to get my bass for the performance. So, sounds like they're here. Okay, so go ahead and get yourself hooked up there. You say keep going? That we're live. 
all wired. Oh, and we are wired right yes. now. No cursing. <laughs> <laughs> so nice to meet you, Matthew. Uh, we, we, we have mutual friend Lisa. Mostly doing some of the work and stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah we, we just, this is a live show. We we are on a fly right now, which is okay. The band is not late. I I gave them the wrong address. No big deal. My fault. No, it's no big deal. It's all you know. When, it's not. But it's, uh, we, we really wanted to do a professional show tonight, so we fell flat on our face. And uh, that's the way it happens. That's the way but live shows were in the old days when everything was live. Yeah. So what we can do is we can go over here and we can get set up. We've got our drum set up here. And uh, we had no idea of how much room was going to be. Yeah, you can come here just like this. You're the first part of the show. You can know that. Okay. So, yeah. so stand, we can't stand too far back. Okay. So anyway, we'll, we'll squat down a little bit. And uh, we'll see if we can get up close to the camera. Okay. So anyway, how long have you been doing this? Uh, we're about two years now. Two years. This, this is, by the way, Matthew Morales. And, uh, okay, so you've been doing bands for two years now. Um, and uh, you have some, some uh, gigs lined up with these guys? Or the no, 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 no. These are, this is one of my favorite local bands. It's uh, yeah. Anthony Carasini Trio. Uh, they played... Uh, Carasini. Uh, okay. They played uh, at uh, Benefit for Harrisburg uh, Rural Boat Association down in Pride of Susquehanna. They hold uh, two events a year, one in July and one in Labor Day weekend. And uh, the, one of my baby bands will listen to you okay. okay. And uh, so we, we got some of your literature out there, so if we can get some of that up there so we can uh, start promoting some of the other bands, hopefully we're going to be bringing them here too. Uh, so, okay, so you're local. Okay, and we have your we have all your information up there on the screen, so that's that's been running pretty good. Yeah. Um, okay, if you see anything uh, that's not misspelled, perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> Everything's fine. Well, but, well, I'm the I'm I'm the writer. She's the editor. So if I make a mistake, <laughs> I blame the editor. But uh, but yeah. Um, okay, so how many bands have you got? Yeah, yeah, uh, there's no bands that, that work under us specifically right now. What we do is we, we throw uh, party and theme style shows. Our long term uh, goal is to specifically work with nonprofits and bottles and 1C3s to help them with fundraising. Um, and that's what we do now. We work with a variety of talent in the Harrisburg area. Okay. All right, so you, you, and you, you'll work with just about anybody that has a, uh, some background. A lot of my friends have talent and uh, the passion. What they don't have is the time, and uh, I take yeah. I take the time that they don't have to help with booking and promotion. Yeah, I, I did that back in the 1980s when you had to walk around with a little cassette player and you had a band and did a little bit of a, a you know a, a few bars and you would go from bar to bar and bar to bar and you'd have tens of thousands of people telling you that. No, it's, and it's not because the band is bad. It's because they just don't have that kind of clientele. Um, but that, that was back in ancient times. We still have dinosaurs back there. Um, but, it, but it was a whole different work then. It, even with lighting and stuff, it was like we had typewriters, you know, and it, it took a while to put out a piece of work. Um, so we're waiting for some uh, you. Are, yes, we are waiting to have you post the next jobs. Yeah. So what's uh, I guess what's coming up next is Talk Heavy Bookings working with uh, Rider Sound uh, Solutions. We're working down in the skate park of Baltimore, uh, where the Tommy Little Dog Bowl is going to be. It's uh, a skate competition as well as a dog adoption drive uh, that's going to run on the 23rd of September. It'll start at 11, and it'll end around uh, 6 p.m. It's going to be competition, skate demos, uh, prizes, giveaways. Uh, they're still looking for volunteers down there, so if you're interested in volunteering, get a hold of uh, Erica Wentz and 
like uh, look up Italian little golf ball. There we go. We got some uh, some of the, uh, the upcoming uh, gigs that, the, that that he's presenting, and then our the bands. Our next uh, show is at River City Blues. It's the outbreak. It's the Black Light Zombie Bash. It'll feature uh, local artists from the area, uh, live painting, black lights, uh, face painting, and live performances from uh, mixed music genre.
Jerry Dam. actually just kind of a free gig at the church I was going to at the time we played like literally Christmas music yeah. and um, since then we've kind of just evolved and be, you know th those two tunes are original tunes that I've written and uh, yeah so this guitar I've had since high school and this is a Fender uh, Mexi Strat and I've modified it a lot but uh, but it's comfortable it has a it's got a nice yeah. sound Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. It, it has a great ring and works well for basically any style, anything from like jazz, like, you know, rock. So what, what made you get into playing the guitar? What, what was your ambition to start? So uh, when I was in high school, uh, I actually played clarinet originally. Um, and 
uh, I tried to join jazz band. They wouldn't let me uh, play clarinet and jazz band. So I was like, well, uh, you know, what instrument don't you have? Oh, we don't have a guitar player. All right, I'll see you next year for auditions. And I, I started about six years ago, six and a half years ago, I got my first guitar. So, um, yep. So. Okay, and, and so you're, you're from New York area? Uh, originally, my hometown is Shippensburg, but I went uh, to Milton Hershey School. So, and so did Jeremy. So we both kind of grew up in Hershey. Okay. Um, and I was there since I was four years old. So. Mm -hmm. did, did you date Davy Jones? You lived up there. Didn't you? Oh, Davy Jones, yeah. <laughs> So let's hear about the drummer. The drummer always gets buried in the back <laughs> and nobody the pays any attention. Yeah. <laughs> He's a great drummer. I'm sure. So yeah, I've been drumming since fifth grade. Uh, I learned through elementary school in concert band, and then I did marching band in high school, and uh, just kind of developed my own um, drum set technique. Yeah. And uh, I kind of delved into a couple different genres. Like uh, started out kind of playing along to like classic rock. Funk and fusion and such. Have, have you had any CDs or anything out there? Yeah, we actually have a we have a, a, a Christmas CD called Figgy Pudding, <laughs> but uh, we recently released a um, a uh, all original CD. Uh, it's called Try Me. It's uh, available. The physical copies are available on uh, either our Facebook page or on Bandcamp. Um, but uh, you can listen to it on YouTube, and then you can download it on iTunes or. Google or Amazon, it's pretty much everywhere. It's on Spotify, so and yep. we don't we don't have your Facebook page on here, but they can they can go through uh, Matthew's info. Yep. To yeah. Get it, right. So okay. So you have you have Matthew's information up there. So if you yeah, and it, we I, I have actually a record shop down in uh, in Hanover. So if you want to try selling some stuff down there, we can get you down there and do it. our new single. Uh, we don't have it on a CD or anything. We're working on an, another CD. Uh, this is kind of a funky uh, tune. It's a tribute to uh, Miles Davis. So. <laughs>
Uh, we're playing Saturday at Hanley's Irish Pub. And September 22nd, we're going to be in Lancaster on the Altana rooftop. Uh, Hanley's Irish Pub is 5 to 8, and the rooftop is going to be 6 to 10. So, four hour gig. Even if you uh, come out for uh, an hour or two, it's going to be a great time. Do you have any so. tickets to get there? Or nope, no coverage charge. Just uh, show up and jam. That's 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 great. That sounds great. great. That's really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. They got food too? Yeah, oh, Ganley's yeah. Irish Pub has fantastic oh, food. Yeah. And I've heard the Altana rooftop is pretty great, too. So. You're going to have to give them a taste of this so that they know that you, you smoke them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for <laughs> sure. <laughs> so that's why you're, 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 you're paying to be there, right? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, he's got the doggy bowl. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> so we have that on there. September 23rd. Okay. In, in Hampton, Baltimore. Tommy Little Doggy Bowl. Have a dog drive. Uh, as well as skate competition, skate demo, prizes and giveaways. Flyers the outbreak that is uh, Friday the 13th in October. You'll see Clark's Secret Identity and the Nefarious Gods, Elementic, and DDU. Um, it's an all age, family friendly event, 18 up with Guardian and 21 to drink and party with us. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you all out there.
bit about your music and your writing inspirations. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, uh, my music, uh, it's kind of interesting. I, I have a very organic process for writing music. Okay. Um, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, there's no set process for certain tunes, like the tune we just played at Cafe de Note. That tune, uh, half the song, I wrote the chords first, and then the melody came after. The other half, I wrote the melody first, and then the chords came after. So it was kind of, uh, you know, uh, um, just kind of organically happened. I heard it all in my head, so I, I tend to write stuff down meticulously. That way, I know exactly what, uh, you know, what I'm writing. But uh, other tunes, like like uh, one night, I actually got off work and I went to uh, actually uh, Turkey Hill, and uh, there was a cute girl working there, and uh, it was really funny. Like uh, I, you know, I thought she was cute, um, and uh, I was I had small talk. But uh, I, uh, I wrote a tune for her called uh, Kisses for Kaylee, because her name's Kaylee. I never saw her again, but she just kind of inspired me to write this uh, this kind of jazz ballad tune. So, oh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but I thought it was pretty cool. She just seemed really enthused about, you know, being around and stuff. It was really cool that, uh, you know, someone even just working at a turkey hill could be so, like, happy and, you know, like life so much. So, I wrote a tune for her, so that, yeah, that, that's cool. And, you know, it just stuff happens. For feeling kind of blue, uh, I heard the riff in my head, and so I spent a while, I figured it out, wrote it down to music, and then the melody <laughs> came after that. I was just kind of jamming on the riff, and I'm like, you know what? You know, that, that tune, I can hear it in my head. And, uh, so I write it down, and then it's, it's there. So, yeah. Back in the Some experiences, some experiences have been insane, like, just kind of like, uh, like, uh, like it hits me, like, and all at once, like, sometimes, sometimes it's not even the chords and the melody separate, sometimes I get both, we're all at once, and I have to write it down as quick as possible before I forget. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was always the back, the guy that was doing the engineering work, mm -hmm. I, I carried the 80 pound reel to reel with me, and did a lot of the recording. Sure of the the medium here, she does like henna kind of art. She did a whole guitar for him. Yeah, I got she a did guitar. my pickguard here, so that's why this looks so cool. Yeah, let's plug as many people as we can get. Yeah. Candy yeah. Sparks yeah. is the yeah. artist that did that guitar. Uh, and then uh, she does photography for us as well. All our professional photos uh, on our we our website is actually ap3jazz.com. All the photos on there on Facebook from live events. She's she's at you know she's taking pictures and 
Uh, she did the photography for uh, Figgy Pudding on the cover and such. She also did the photography for Last I did an acoustic project of kind of finger folk style acoustic music. Um, and uh, she did the photography for that as well. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. The uh, outbreak yeah, show, yeah, you want to you wanted to give a little more information? No, I'm not with that. Did okay. everybody hear? Uh, <laughs> no, not from here. No, not from here. You got a good plug yeah. in. So. Candy's also going to be the featured live painter at the outbreak on Friday the 13th in October. Friday the 13th. This yep. is going to be good, right? <laughs> okay. Um, so, let's see. It's... Okay, so what we're going to do now is, uh, I guess we pretty much did just do one more quick set. And, uh, Want to do a jam? <laughs> we can, we're just going to make something up. That's yeah, for two minutes. Minute. Yeah, All right. And then, then what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to go, go to your YouTube, and we're going to put that up because then we have to yep, tear it out. So that the next guys on the next show come in, they got guns. So we, uh, we Cut us off. They got <laughs> guns. <laughs> guns and guitars. So yeah. man. Um, <laughs> all right. Guns and roses. Hey, why not? Right. Yeah. Oh, oh.
probably yeah. just lift stuff and take it out and we'll okay. pack it up out there. Maybe. You gotta go? Yeah, you gotta get those well, things. I gotta get it. Oh, we got the instruments away for yeah. instruments away. So right. Right. That's just yeah. Yeah. Just hand off this card to you. <laughs> the Antipirancini Trio. Good paisan name, eh? It's a good, it's good. It's a good thing, it's a good Okay, guys, take it away.
We review guns, uh, mix a little political commentary when necessary just to mix things up. Um, just to give you a breakdown real quick on our uh, background, I'm a Navy vet. Um, I was a master at arms. Evan has his history in uh, the private sector and private security. Um, we're both NRA certified instructors, and uh, we, we have a pretty substantial background in this type of Marine. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, and give you a review of the FN FNS, uh, a polymer 45 that you just might want to learn more about. Today we're going to talk about whether it's a higher end polymer pistol that is a tactical wear or a tougher wear. Um, so I'm going to start by giving Evan, uh, let him tell a quick story about how he came into ownership of this weapon. Um, 
very briefly, uh, this firearm, I'm going to pull it out of the box here. It has been safety checked, and it is clear. And it's the 15 round, comes with three 15 round mags, 45. I went into a big box store um, a year ago or so, and I went there to buy a pair of shoes for my mother. I told my mom, I'm not buying a gun. I'm not doing it. I ain't going to do it. I'm just going to go up here, look around, follow some listed full safety material, and leave. Well, as I was walking around the counter a couple of times, I spotted this gun in the used gun section. Uh, they had a very high price on it. And the new one, brand new one, stainless steel, unfired, was $725. This was $999. I brought the manager over and I said, sir, how come this gun is for that price? And they got to inspecting it, they got to looking at it, and he said, I tell you what, let it go. It's $400 today. As is. I said, get done. So, got my mom the shoes, got her her stuff, got my unexpected 45. Um, the reason I like a 45 is I was already chambered up for a 45. I already had one. And buying a variety of ammunition doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. But this particular firearm comes with three... 15 round mags. There's not another polymer frame pistol that holds a 45 15 round without putting an extended mag on there. Just ain't gonna do it. And for the money you get, you can't beat it. Uh, took it to the range. I have a target here uh, we're gonna show you later that this is very capable of doing some very impressive groups. Very impressive. And I wasn't shooting for groups. I was just testing ammunition, doing my thing, breaking it in, putting 250 plus rounds through it, and it shot beautifully. Uh, very impressed with the trigger pull, and it's just a gun that I would recommend for anybody that's in security, security patrol, um, alarm response. You have any questions, Andy? Uh, no, but let's go ahead and jump into the specs of this thing then. So um, we're looking at an MSRP of eight hundred and twenty-four dollars, according to their website. Um, caliber, like Evan had mentioned, forty-five ACP, and it's double single action. The barrel length is four and a half inches, and the weight is thirty-three point two ounces. Uh, the trigger pull, it's about eight pounds for double action and about four pounds for single action. And as Evan said, has a magazine capacity of 15. They also sell 10 round mags uh, for those of you out there in California. Um, so Evan, uh, let's jump back to you. Why don't you tell people a little bit about the functionality of this weapon and your, just your general impressions. Just expand upon a little bit more what you um, experienced. As a fighting handgun you cannot beat this it is one of the few handguns that actually have you can carry it cock and lock um, like in security work I've run into where if you're working like a bank and somebody sees us they go nuts oh my god you got a cock gun in your holster well okay so what before you go on duty, you do that. You put it right back in your holster. You, you're civilian legal. When you're out there in a patrol car, you're driving around an east or west bay route, there you go. You know, it just, and it's and fully ambidextrous. That's another thing, too. I can fully operate this firearm left-handed. No, qual no qualms. So if you need your support hand to shoot, there you go.
How about the grip, Evan? What do you What do you think about that? What's your Nineteen eleven, all the way. Um, Glock should have copied this. Okay. At bottom line, uh, it is flexible. There is a video where a guy's completely compressing that. In the Texas heat, I'm an Arkansas boy. I understand that weakens anything. But if you want resistance, you put a magazine in it. Mm. It's rigid again. So there you go. It's not a big deal. It's a training issue. Right. Now, your hands are a little bit bigger. So for somebody with smaller hands, what would you not, do? Not a problem. Okay. I, I had a student. I got a target right here that she peppered this target with this gun. She never shot a bigger gun before. And she put what would normally stop somebody. Sure. You know, on that target. Sure. Now, I got an opportunity to shoot the FNX Tactical, um, which is practically the same weapon. Um a couple of months ago, and um, I was surprised. I have never been the biggest fan of 45s um, for no particular reason. It's just I, I don't own any. Um, I own nines and 40s, um, and any 45s I've shot have always just been 1911s. And I do like the way a 1911 shoots. There's just something about it. It's iconic. People uh, people can relate to it. Uh, I was very skeptical about putting a 45 ACP round through a polymer gun. And I tell you what. When I shot it, it really made me think twice about not spending the thousand dollars on this polymer uh, pistol. Um, so, um, how about the uh, the bore axis? Can you talk a little bit about that? And yeah, I, that I, something I was going to tell you. I can put a tactical upper on this gun for seven hundred bucks, and all I have to do is that right there, and I'm back to running. I can put the suppressor host on. Mm -hmm. It's not, it, the guns are interchangeable uh, just from one to the other. Um, the bore axis was never a thing until high point came along. Yep. Um, when I first started, you know, hey, training. don't buy a high point. Don't, we're not out, whatever works, <laughs> whatever works. Uh, but the, um, uh, Sorry, I threw you off. Yeah. Uh, the bore axis. The bore axis on this is just like the um, SIG 220. It's just a little thicker than the 220. It's got a heavier spring than the 220. It's, so the recoil is absorbed. It's just a very, you know, it's a modular pistol. I mean, as far as a... Duty gun goes, like I said, for those patrol officers out there doing alarm response, this is your, you know, this is your gun. Sure. You know, um, I'm going to go to, to, I'm going to put that down. What Over, would you say the break-in uh, break period is for that weapon? 300 rounds. Okay. That's, you know, 300 rounds. And this is this going back to my old school days. Okay. There's your nine millimeter. Okay. There's your little nine. Standard round. Just not, you know, the reason that law enforcement use this round now in a lot of departments. It's because they're run by bean counters. You can get a lot of this for a little amount of money, and you do a lot of training. So it makes sense for a department to go back to a 9 millimeter now. Mm -hmm. Don't have a problem with that. But if you're out there on a patrol by yourself, for and your backup's an hour, two hours away, do you want that 9 millimeter? Or do you want this 230 grain slug? You know, you know. Sometimes, you know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer is bigger is better, in some cases. Mm -hmm. And when your when your life is in the line, you know, it says you know, it's you know, it's a big difference. Sure. And um, you know, you need that extra stopping power. And I know there's a lot of 45 guys out there. I shoot somebody in the arm and they'll blow their arm off. Is that 
I'm going to tell you this, my experience. There was a situation where a homeowner shot a 300-plus pound man that broke in the wrong door with a 45. Six rounds, that dude needed, uh, they were they were working on him right there in the hallway. Okay? There's a cop episode, an old cops episode. In fact, it was on Cops Reloaded not too long ago where a guy had a 9mm, he was on top of the steps, shooting, a dude, shooting at a guy down the steps. And he was taking them rounds. Mm-hmm. He's taking them. He's standing there. He's, he's arguing with the dude, and the dude's up there just popping. Yeah. If he had a forty five, I guarantee you he wouldn't be talking. He might still be down there breathing. Yeah. But he ain't doing no talking. Yeah, I think we've all heard similar stories. You know, and we all heard similar stories, but I'm just saying you yep. that's you know. Yep. And everybody has the the you know, the forty five guys and we all heard them. I put a round in this guy and he went down, da 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 da. This round these two rounds, a nine millimeter and the forty-five, each one of them over a hundred years old. Mm-hmm. Each one of them now are over a hundred years old, and they've been on the battlefields from World War One all the way up to today. Um, the um, the reason that the forty-five that we adopted it was when we had, we were in the Philippines in eighteen ninety-eight. That was the bottom line. That's why we have it, and it was a known stopper. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that I noticed about that weapon, the FNX, is um, the trigger pull. And that's one of the things I was most surprised about. You know, it uh, the trigger pull is so light on this thing that it really, on both double and single action, um, and I'm going to try not to sweep my buddy here. But, yeah, that's all right. Um, <laughs> the trigger it's pull on this, hardly any take up, and it's just so crisp. Look at the reset. No. Okay, yeah, we'll go back and do that. And Hold the trigger. Hold the trigger back. Now recycle, now recycle the slide. So no, no, no. Let me show you. <laughs> do this. There's your trigger reset. Yeah. I mean, that's that's Nothing. a reset right there. Yep. I mean, and going from double to single, I was getting some shots in double action that were just ridiculous. Now, that one target I got, the whole center of it got shot out of. Yeah. But I do have a target here. Uh, whenever you're ready for it, I'll, I'll bring it up and show you the two primary groups with match grade ammo out of that gun. It's just, it's clean, it's crisp. Um, and you know, for a bigger caliber weapon, that's really important. So, there we go. You wanna go ahead and uh, and show that target and just yeah. give us a little bit of backstory sure, on that? Sure, sure. Uh, I was at a local indoor range. I was shooting 10 yards, which is a little stretch, but I was just stretching out my carry ammo. Um, and guys know that's been around guns, your carry ammo may not be the most accurate as advertised. And different guns shoot different targets. This grouping, these two groupings here were straight up. Here, uh, yeah. Stand up here. Yeah. These two groupings right here were just some shots that I just took out of just regular my everyday carry ammo. Didn't even mark it on target. Just want to see what it would do. The kicker I want to show you are these two right here. These are five rounds of Colt National Match ammo. The ammunition's only been out for less than two years, year and a half. That's five shots. There's 15 right there. And there's 10, yeah, there's 10 rounds here. Five there, 10 there. Out of 
at 10 yards out of that pistol. That's factory sights, factory trigger at 10 yards. Right out of the box. Right out of the box. So would you say that that's a, uh, a comp competition shooter right out of the box? Or? Uh, I could say IDPA. Uh, definitely, if you carry that gun, if you carry one of these guns for duty purposes, right out the box. Uh, total, uh, uh, good Lord, total competition. IDPA, uh, any kind of service competition you could think of okay uh, just real quick can you can you go over some of the differences between the FNX and the FNX tactical uh, I can tell you the price point is about a $200 difference so the MSRP on the FNX again is $825 give or take and then um, so I have the FNX 13, tactical was just running up over a thousand dollars yeah so uh, and I've seen them go for anywhere from a thousand to about 13 1400 even uh, when you throw a micro red dot on there, so can you explain just what that what makes up that price point? What makes up the price point is well, with the FNX, FNX was the first company to put the micro red dot system on any other. Gun. Yeah, they exactly. used to. They they had this gun right here at one time, where they called it the competitor mm -hmm. and all they did was put a fiber optic front sight on it okay. black rear and they had the uh, uh, the mount for your RMR yep. your data point and that's another thing too they come when you get a tactical it comes with all the mounts right so it doesn't matter what you're running they got a mount for it mm -hmm. uh, very very uh, uh, cutting edge I mean, they they were they were they're like the that's something like some HK would come up with. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't realize HK was the first polymer pistol. Okay. The VP seventy was the first for striker fire double action pistol. Why is it important? Why, why polymer? Uh, that's just something that HK did, and a guy by the name of Augustus Glock came up. And 10 years later, <laughs> um, came up with the Glock uh, 17 yeah. and started selling it to law enforcement for $299. That's what, I that, mean, that's that's what he was, that's how come cops love Glocks because they were $299. Right. You know, there you can't, you can't argue and you get 18 rounds, there you go. Sure. You know. Uh, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure where that's going to go. So, but you make a good point there. Two hundred ninety nine dollars for that first Glock. Um, you know, the the it was important for the police to be able to have a, a cheap weapon, but one that's also reliable, uh, which obviously Glock is. Nobody would argue that. Um, so we now we're on the other end of the spectrum here. We have a polymer weapon. Uh, that is in between eight hundred and fourteen hundred dollars. So, um, you know, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Um, just, can you just kind of give your impression on that? And yeah, I, I'll do more than that. I'll just go ahead and do this. It's that baby right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, Glock slides are carbon steel. Mm -hmm. You know they're Lightweight or material, it's got a polygonal barrel. Yep. This is cold hammer forged, stainless steel slide, mm. steel guide rod. I mean, that guide rod is steel. Okay. 24 pound flat recoil spring on it. You know, this is a tank. Yeah. This is a tank right here. So it's made for precision. It's in made 45. in 45. They. You know, if Browning was standing here between us, <laughs> he would John Moses Browning, he would have said, Yeah, and it's F N. The yeah. company is hundred and twenty years old. Okay. You know, you think about that for a second. Yeah. This gun company's been around for over hundred and twenty five years. Sure. So, you know, there you go. I mean, they you know, if somebody's gonna build something, they're gonna know how to build it. Okay. Now is this the is this the gun that 
I'm going to want to get and carry on a daily basis, or is this the duty gun, or uh, is this the competition shooter gun, maybe, if you put a little bit of time into it? Um, what, what do you think? Is I carry it daily. Okay. It's my it's one of my daily carries. But, but you also have the, the experience as a, as a security contractor. So yeah. You're used to carrying a, a, a of, uh, Yeah, all the time. Would you say, you know, somebody like myself or some of your friends or family, would they feel comfortable buying this as a carry gun? I would say probably not. Okay. Uh, the average Joe, uh, probably not. Okay. But like I, but like you say, you know, I'm a security contractor, and I don't care what gun you carry, it ain't going to be comfortable. Yeah. It's going to be heavy. Yeah. You know, it's it doesn't flex. Um, you got to buy a holster mm-hmm. to make it work. So, you know... It, by the way, that's our next week. Uh, our show is going to be reviewing some of the holsters that we have. Uh, and we're just going to go into some of that with you. Some of the uh, dynamics of different holsters, the different types of holsters, and um, how we can apply those in, in just the, our daily lives. Uh, we're just going to pick a, a select few for next week. We have another handful of holsters that we're going to pick another week to do. But just as Evan mentioned that... That's something next week that we are going to touch on. So, you know, definitely make sure you tune in next week as well. Um, but anyway, to, to come back around, so maybe not necessarily for the average Joe who wants a carry piece, but for somebody who needs 15 rounds of 45, this is it. This the, is the absolute it, this if is the you, only thing there is. If you're a security patrol officer, yeah. this, is, this should be on your – this is what you need to save up for. This 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 gun has got security patrol written all over it. Alarm response, security patrol, somebody that's out there driving around to ten to fifteen hours a day, uh wearing a wearing a badge, you're a target, um you're in like I said, East Bay Route, West Bay Route, driving around, and those are nicknames for bad sides of town. Uh, this this will get you home mm-hmm. because your law enforcement backup may be an hour, two hours away, mm-hmm. and you just roll up on a bad situation. You you know who cares if you're compatible with anybody else, right? Because you're there by yourself. Yeah, this will get you home. This I could tell you would get me home any day of the week. Outstanding. Um, okay, so we've gone over some of the specs, um, some of the functionality of the weapon. Um, let's see, I would say, um, do you think that, that uh, people have a good idea of the FN and FNX, but um, what do you think? Are we going tactical wear or Tupperware? Uh, definitely tactical. Um uh... There's nothing that FN puts out that is Tupperware. Mm-hmm. Um, their 509 is very popular. Mm-hmm. Um, Larry Vickers, uh, La- Larry Vickers, uh, put his two cents in with the 509. Mm-hmm. The 509, if you're looking for an everyday carry, there you go. Okay, I'm not advertising for FN, but I am a you know 124 years, man. Yeah. About 124 years. Do you know what the warranty is on the FNX? Uh, lifetime. Lifetime warranty for one owner, for the original owner. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you bought this used and you had a problem, I'm pretty sure FN would swap out the part or even sure. send you the part. I have heard that FN customer service is excellent. I talked to them. I mean, I've talked to them. And they... Hmm... <clears throat> Un, those guys are just like me and you. Yeah. I mean, they're real people. Um, another thing I want to say is on the tactical version, you get that nice eagle canvas bag. Okay. Uh, guys, that that bag is indestructible. Yeah. It survived fire. I know that for a fact. It survived a fire. Do you want to just close that up and just sure. show them this case real quick? You know, now this. On the end of the now, show yeah, this case right here. It's nothing, this is nothing but a plastic case. 
This is not the nice tactical. Yeah, but compared to what you get with a Glock or. It, you know. uh, oh, <laughs> well, definitely. Uh, FN does. Uh, one thing I want to say is, never put a loaded gun in this case. Don't ever put a loaded gun mm-hmm. because there's no safe way. In as instructors, you know, you point at the pistol, you pick it up with your primary hand. This gun out of this case, and it says down here at the bottom, never put a loaded firearm in this case. Magazines are fine. You have to pick it up from behind the trigger mm-hmm. to pick it up and then maneuver the hand and and do what you need to do. But as far as picking up the way you're right, really supposed to, you can't do it out of that case. Sure. Yeah, I just wanted to point that out. You know, again, you know, we're looking at a higher price point, so... To have a nice case that it comes with that you can actually keep the gun in, to me that's nice. You know, I'm, not, I'm used to buying some cheaper guns that just come in come in a cardboard box. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So um, that's just one of the things that I wanted to note. So uh, Evan had touched on the fact that uh, some some safety issues. Again, another uh, show that we're going to have is actually going to be on basic gun safety. Um, we're going to go over the basic functionality of handguns and rifles. We're actually going to go out in the range and, and show you um, some range time. We're going to show you the importance of, of a range officer and what their job actually is. So, again, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to get that out for you. So, um, let's see. So, we're going to finish up here. Uh, for price point, we give it four out of five stars since it's a little bit on the pricier side. Um, Evan? Evan? How would you say for the trigger pull? Uh, five out of five. Okay. I mean, I that that's what surprised me. Traditional double actions. Uh, you you're really iffy. Yeah. You know you, you you but that I put that up against a bread bread a brigadier any day of the week. All right. Well, for weight and just general ergonomics, we give it five out of five stars. Um, and then. Um, what do you say? Do we recommend this? I highly recommend this for any security officer. Okay. Well, we hope you've enjoyed uh, our review of the FNFNX, and we hope to bring you more reviews and commentary soon. I'm Andy. And I'm Evan. Deplorable General. General. Over and out. out.